Hi guys. Um, so today's video, um, I'm going to go over a few different things. Um, the first thing is, is I have a bed uh, alongside my driveway um, that when I first planted it, I threw in some gooseneck loosestrife and it did really, really well here. Um, and I tried to tuck in some other perennials and such, um, but the loosestrife is so aggressive um, that it kind of crowded everything else out. So my project for tomorrow is to try to uh, reclaim this bed a little bit. I want to keep the loose drive, um, and then I have like this, I don't know, wild, I call it Queen Anne's lace, but I don't, I don't think that it is, but it, it seems to play nice with the loose drive. So I'm going to keep those um, in here, but I had some echinaceas that I want to pull out. Uh, there's a Joe Pye weed, I think, in there that sometimes will um, tolerate the aggressiveness of the other two. Um, and I think there's an iris tucked in there too that I got to pull out. Um, but the reason that I wanted to um, come to you tonight, it's uh, Tuesday night, I'll finish this video tomorrow. Um, I wanted to get a head start on this uh, bed and um, go over a few of the, um, uh, what do I want to call them? Uh, noxic, noxic weeds, um, some really aggressive um, thugs. Uh, that reseed themselves um, and will take over an area pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> one is uh, bittersweet. We all battle bitter, bittersweet. So I kind of wanted to show you what that looks like at its young stage. Um, I do have it growing pretty aggressively through here. I didn't tackle it last year. Um, the other thing is um, burning bush, uh, which is a form of euonymus. Uh, it used to be really, really common. Um, it gets beautiful red leaves in the fall, but it reseeds itself like crazy and I certainly didn't plant uh, these two here. Um, I left them for a while because the birds seem to like them but it's time for them to go. Um, I'm gonna try to at some point eradicate all of the burning bush that um, was on the property um, when we bought it. Uh, this one is one that reseeded and you'll see how big it is. Um, the other thing is a wild rose. Um, I noticed this wild rose growing here last year. Uh, I had intentions of coming out and doing my clipping and brush be goning and doing the whole nine yards um, and I never did it and um, I noticed today that it actually has flower buds on it and what made me really look at it was um, I was at a friend's house uh, I don't know a couple days ago and in between his house and a neighbor's house there is a huge huge patch of what I looked at and said those are roses like I don't understand why are they here and why are they 20 feet tall um, and so I identified it as a multi multi flora uh, rose which is the wild rose um, it is not anything that you can purchase um, a long time ago you could it was sold uh, for many different reasons if you look it up you'll see it's actually kind of an interesting plant um, but it is really aggressive and um, not a great plant to have on your property. So I'm going to get rid of that too. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so I wanted to show you guys my, my bed before I start uh, cutting stuff down because it's going to change dramatically. Um, I also have a tree form um, phantom hydrangea, paniculata hydrangea in here that I think I'm going to pop out and put somewhere else. Um, I don't think this bed gets enough sun for it. It just hasn't really flourished there doesn't seem real happy so I might swap it out I have a variegated dogwood in the back really cute one called Eva uh, which I think would look nice in here it would brighten it up um, the uh, the gooseneck loose strife um, is a plant that you can't get anymore either uh, because it's so aggressive it doesn't play nice with others in a in a like perennial bed um, it works fine here um, because it's driveway on one side, lawn on the other, and my husband just mows down the ones that try to go out into the lawn. Um, so we're able to contain it um, pretty well uh, in that respect. Um, and what else do I have in here? I have some lamium. Um, I have an azalea I planted last fall um, that seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, it's a smooth azalea, so it's going to bloom probably in another couple weeks, a lot later than your regular azaleas do. Um, but it seems to have taken. Um, and then I did some bulbs in here. Last fall, I did my daffodils. Uh, I did a few tulips. Um, the squirrels dug up my tulips. Thank you very much, squirrels. What happens when you live in the woods? Um, but what I like about doing my bulbs in this bed is that um, I don't have to cut back the foliage, that everything grows up and around it and it dies back on its own without it being too, too ugly. So I'm going to flip you guys around and kind of give you a quick little 
view of uh, my bed and what I'm going to be doing because it's gonna look totally different. So let me flip you. All right, first off, I've mentioned I don't use chemicals, that's why. Uh, that's Rex, that's my daughter's mini horse. Um, he comes out and eats the enormous amount of clover that we have in the lawn and he really seems to enjoy it. As you can see, he's wagging his tail there. So that's Rex. All right, so this bed, there's my tree form um, phantom hydrangea. Like I said, that's coming out. And then that's that wild, what I call wild Queen Anne's lace. I know there's another name for it. I've looked it up before. Um, <clears throat> but like I said, it seems to play nice with the uh, gooseneck. As you can see here in the middle um, is my gooseneck loosestrife coming up through it. So that Queen Anne's lace will bloom first. Um, once those blooms have passed, then usually my um, gooseneck is ready to bloom. Um, in the back there behind the windmill is the burning bush and it is enormous. Um, I think there's two or three of them um, that self-seeded themselves. They volunteered themselves there. Um, I am going to uh, hack those back uh, tonight, I think, uh, to get a start. And then you can see some of the bittersweet, um, which is also something I battle here, which is that larger leaf there, and it binds up. You can see it curling there. Um, and it looks like I might have some poison ivy growing up the tree too. Um, luckily, I don't get poison ivy, so I'll be able to rip that up, um, maybe throw some of the brush be gone on it. Um, so those are two, or actually three, if you add the um, poison ivy in there. Um, and then here's the rose. This is the multiflora rose. Um, it self-seeded itself in here, um, like I said, and it is really healthy. Um, <laughs> and then there's some bittersweet curling around it. Um, but this is that rose. And I've heard it's beautiful when it blooms. There's the flower buds. Um, it's white, uh, I believe, and um, smells really pretty. Um, but that doesn't uh, entice me to leave it because I know how, now that I've read on it, how aggressive it is and how bad it is for the environment. Um, and I want it out. I don't want any part of that. Um, so that is going to come out and I'm sure it's going to hurt because it's got some pretty <laughs> good sized thorns on it. Um, you will see these popping up sometimes in your garden. Um, I've had people ask me about them before. And um, generally the flower, like I said, it's white, it's, but it's not beautiful. It's not like your regular rose. Um, your hybridized roses, so your hybrid teas, your florabundas, um, you know, the fancy roses that you pay for, um, are some of them are grafted, uh, which means that they take the fancy rose and they graft it onto a wild rose root base uh, because the hybrid rose doesn't have a real strong uh, root system, but the wild rose does and so they will uh, graft the two together um, giving that plant a strong um, you know uh, it grows stronger um, but you can lose the graft uh, that can happen depending on the winter and then sometimes you're left with this wild rose the root base will take over because it is so damn aggressive um, so anyway so I'm gonna tackle that get that out of there um, you can see my loose stripe is just filling in really nice I got some sticks in there. Um, there's my smooth azalea. I don't know if you can see it, but the flower buds are there and they're doing good. Uh, this is a, um, I think it's white with like a pink tinge to it, but there is that darn burning bush and it is just loving that spot. Um, my uh, lamium underneath needs to be weeded. Uh, there's some more gooseneck loose strife, but I have a beautiful rock under there that I want to see again. Uh, so <clears throat> you can see underneath, if I can get under there, the burning bush. And burning bush you can identify by the um, squared off stem on it, which is kind of unique. It's uh, an interesting look. I don't know if you can see it underneath there, but uh, that's how you identify it. And it starts as a small little seedling that a bird drops for you and uh, turns into this in a couple of years. Um, it's really not a uh, great plant to have. Um, so anyway, this is the other side of it. We have a stump there that I have a begonia I'm gonna pop on. You can still see some of my um, 
daffodil bulbs, uh, the foliage still left there. Um, but the gooseneck blue stripe, like I said, will fill in. Um, this is a side that I did the tulips and I pulled a lot of the um, gooseneck out of there uh, to plant those tulips. Um, but it will fill in, I promise. Um, so anyway, so that's that bed. So I'm going to tackle this. I'm going to start it tonight and uh, I'll give you guys an update tomorrow um, on this same video when I splice them all together. Um, oh, look, I have an oak growing in there too. Fantastic. Um, I've neglected this bed for way too long. Um, oh, I wanted to show you my Oriole nest because it's in this tulip tree that is in the center. If I can get the right angle. They were just up in it. I don't know, can I get close? There it is. Here's my little nest. Mommy and Daddy were just in there. I don't think the baby's hatched yet, but that's one of the three nests that I have uh, around me. And I love that they choose this tree. This is the third year in a row they've picked a different spot on this tree. So there it is. All right, you guys, I will pick this back up tomorrow and uh, this bed's going to look completely different. See you in a bit. Hi, guys. Happy Wednesday. Um, so I tackled the rest of that bed this morning. Um, I got my um, variegated dogwood planted. It's not where I wanted to put it. Um, and uh, in trying to find a spot that I could dig uh, without hitting a major rock, um, I kind of destroyed the bed uh, as well as um, digging up um, or yanking up some of the bittersweet uh, and the roses that were in here um, and a whole bunch of weeds. Um, so I did my best um, and the gooseneck will uh, bounce back. It won't take very long. Gosh, I'm a mess. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to kind of give you a heads up um, on uh, my progress on this bed, show you my begonia. And uh, as far as that phantom paniculata hydrangea, I decided to leave it. Um, I'm gonna leave it probably till the fall um, or maybe early next spring I'll move it. I just, I don't have another spot to put it yet. Um, I have a lot going on uh, in the back of the house. And um, the second part of this video, I'm gonna give you a tour um, of what's going on back there as well as how my uh, containers in the front are doing and um, how I did my makeshift uh, vegetable garden this year. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna flip you around and uh, you can take a peek at my, my bed. It's kind of a mess, but um, like I said, it'll bounce back. I'm not too worried. Okay, so there's the paniculata, um, that phantom one. I'm gonna leave it. Um, it does have some decent growth coming and I'm hoping that with the burning bush being gone maybe it'll get a little bit more light and uh, might do a little better. Um, the paniculatas are uh, the variety of hydrangeas that really do um, need some sunlight to do well um, unlike the macrophyllas the mop heads um, would prefer shade. Um, the panicle or paniculatas uh, really do want a little bit more sun so um, this is the begonia that I popped on my Stump, and I love it. I, it's so pretty. I really, really like it, and I think it looks good with the stump. But look at these little teeny mushrooms. Can you see them? Aren't they cool? I thought they were really cool. So anyway, mushrooms. Go figure. Um, so this is where I decided to put that um, dogwood, the variegated dogwood. This is Eva. Um, I think she's gonna get um, eight to ten. Uh, tall and wide um, and I just I needed something white over here to kind of brighten the area um, because although the dogwood is kind of in sun right now um, the rest of the day it's pretty shady over here um, that vine that is hanging off the trunk of the um, big tulip tree if you can see it um, I am leaving that that is Virginia creeper uh, unlike on this side where I cut the um, poison ivy um, I cut it at the base and uh, treated it. So that's just going to die and fall off. I'm not overly worried about it, but I wasn't going to go picking in the bark to try to get that vine out. Um, but anyway, um, Virginia creeper, it's a native um, vine. Find it wood lines, um, you know, they, they're happy. And honestly, they are beautiful in the fall. They turn a really, really pretty... Um, like reddish orange in the fall. Um, so coming around this side, my lamium um, 
it filled in pretty good in here. Um, there's that Virginia creeper again. A lot of people think it's poison ivy. Um, it's not. It's uh, it's really pretty. I'll show you a big patch of it um, in the next video. But anyway, my lamium is probably going to burn up a little bit because it was used to the shade, uh, and now it is blaring in the sun um, on this side of the bed. There is the mess that I made in the middle of the bed, trying to find a spot to put that um, dogwood. And uh, I didn't have much success in there. And um, ripping out the bittersweet and the rose um, and all the other junk in there kind of made a mess. But a couple weeks, like I said, you won't see it. My gooseneck will uh, take over. Uh, there's my mess. Um, so anyway, so that's how this bed is uh, progressing and um i have to get out here and do a little bit more weeding and some more sticks um out of the center of that bed but we'll see we'll see if i have time so anyway um oh my joe pie weed i forgot to mention that that's um that's in there and now i think without the burning bush in there i think it's going to do okay so i'm gonna leave that too and we'll see uh what happens uh with that because that's a good pollinator plant and uh, I hate to get rid of them. So anyway, so that's my bed progress and uh, I'll do updates, um, but I will see you in a little bit with the uh, tour uh, of my uh, containers that you watched me plant some of, um, and then the vegetable area um, and my strawberries. I actually have red strawberries. Um, all right, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so here's the beginning of the tour. This is um, my front porch. This is the grilling porch. Um, this is also our front door. Uh, I always try to decorate my bench to match uh, my flowers, and I think this year um, it did pretty good. Um, that foxtail fern uh, was one that I had out here last year uh, when I brought it inside. It didn't do very well, and I cut it back, and it was it came back pretty nice. Um, you can see where Fred scratches at the door when he wants to come in, but um, I put one of the willow baskets on my front door with some um, live Boston ferns in it. We'll see how that does. Um, and then this side, I'm really excited about. Um, this is where I had that foxtail fern last year. Um, these owl planters came in yesterday and I fell in love with them and knew I needed them on my front porch. So um, I threw a rabbit's foot, a uh, Boston and some of the variegated Swedish ivy up in that top one. Um, and I really like how it looks. It's a, it's a fairly shaded area. It gets filtered light um, throughout the day, mostly for the um, early afternoon-ish. Um, and so ferns seem to do really well there. We'll see how the Swedish Ivy does. Um, and then in my, um, my railing window boxes this year, I did um, Boston uh, ferns um, instead of color. I don't know, I, I like the look of it. I like the look of the green. Um, I just think it's pretty. So anyway, um, the barrels that I did on either side of the door um, <clears throat> are filling in really nice. Um, my coleus did get hit um, with some frost. So um, you can see my little toad house down there. We have so many toads. Um, so I have little houses for them. Um, anyway, so uh, in this particular pot, um, I replaced the mosaic uh, coleus with a new one after that freeze uh, that we had. Oh, there's my toad right there. Hey, buddy. Go in your house. That house is for you. Um, anyway, um, this particular coleus, that one there, I think that one was French Quarter, um, I didn't replace on this barrel. And you can see the new growth is coming. Um, it's taking an awful long time for it to, to bounce back. So uh, shame on me for planting too early. Um, I did cover and it was just too cold. So the coleus really likes to stay um, at like a 60 degree um, temperature. Uh, it can hit a little lower than that, but it, it really doesn't respond well. And then I had this extra coleus that I just popped in that pot. Um, I just kind of, I don't know, stuck it there. We'll see how it does. I like the red in it. Um, and then over here, I did one of the um, salvia. Uh, this is the dark purple uh, in the Rockin' series, I think. Um, I did one here last year, and my hummingbirds absolutely loved it. Um, every morning I'd come out and have my coffee, and my hummingbirds would be flying around. Um, I like how it has kind of a two-tone effect. So before the flowers open, it's really dark, almost black. And then as they open, you can see how purple 
the flower is and they just they love that shape um and they love this plant but it gets huge i mean huge like huge huge it'll fill that whole space um i think it got four feet tall four feet wide um last year and uh, required a lot of water because uh, i used too small of a pot but that's what i do so on the other side um this matching barrel um i replaced the french quarter look at how big it is that coleus but i left the mosaic um that had gotten frost damaged and you can kind of see um you know it's it's struggling a little bit so i did the opposite on this one as i did on uh, the one uh, over on the other side on the left um here's my herb planter um that three-tiered galvanized thing that um that I had shown you in an earlier video. Um, on the top, I have my rosemary in the pot. Uh, on the left-hand side, on the top is my lemon thyme and then some parsley. I had some extra um, flat leaf that I popped in there. The second tier down, I did the pizza night oregano, which I really like. It's kind of a cross between oregano and thyme um, and a little chive. And then in that bottom, um, I did the boxwood basil. Um, I like that when it has the small leaves um, and it kind of rounds out. It's just really tight and compact. I think it looks really cute um, and fills that spot nice. Um, and uh, there's a lot of it. There is a lot uh, to pick. Um, oh, there's Fred. He was laying on my mulch. Um, and then in the two pots to the left, I did a, uh, the flat leaf parsley. Um, mainly I do my parsley as my um, host plant for the black swallowtails. Um, because I always have a lot of those. And then I did, I just did a pot of basil. That doesn't look great because I just watered it. So it's, uh, that's the large leaf basil. And then I also did a dill, um, which is also a host plant for some of the butterflies. <clears throat> so I'm going to step back and kind of show you what the front of the house looks like. Um, as you can see, Fred is laying in the mulch. This is one of the reasons why I do not permanently plant in front of the house because um, he likes to lay in whatever it is. Uh, that I plant there. So I've given up and went to containers um, someday, maybe. Um, but my window boxes are doing really, really great. Um, I love that combination. Um, the lantana that I popped in there is just barely starting to show through, but that'll pop um, pretty soon. Uh, and then the containers in the front, I tried to mimic uh, some of the colors above because as I, I, I do things in stages, so I had done my window boxes early. And then when I came back to do uh, my containers in the front, on the ground, um, <laughs> we were sold out of the majority of the plants that were that I was going to use to to match that. So um, here's my containers. Um, this one I did um, one of the um, red grasses in the back. Two different, col uh, actually three different coleuses. Uh, the one in the front is a trailing coleus, so that one does match the window boxes. Um, color wise, I think I did okay. Um, we'll see. And then the yellow daisies, cause I need it. I definitely need more yellow down here. Um, this pot here, um, I threw one of the forever red hook resin, uh, on the left hand side. Um, that petunia is called cinnamon. Um, and it acts very similarly to like honey where it kind of changes color, um, as the flower opens and then as it fades, um, you really can't see it cause everybody's full open right now. And I threw a coleus in there. There's a fireworks grass in the back uh, just to give it some texture. And then one of the blacky sweet potato vines in the front. Um, sweet potato vine will take over. Uh, so I'm really gonna have to uh, keep that pinched back. That pot in the back, um, I did one of those giant salvias um, to try to take up some space to hide that. I'm hoping it'll hide that weirdness in the siding. I don't know. Um, and then uh, the coleus that's in that one is not one that we grew because um, we sold out of a lot of our our own coleus. Um, we had to buy that one in, but I think that one was called Florida Sunset. And I really like the, um, I like the texture of the leaf itself. And I like the different colors uh, that are going on. And I think it, I think it all ties together. And then that petunia was the closest that I could get um, to the um, pink that's in that one, the Queen of Hearts. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I don't hate it. Um, and then I just needed a few little things in front of my hose reel. Um, I have to be careful there because as I pull the hose out, um, I damage the plants. So those coleus are probably going to have to come out a little bit, maybe in front of that pot. 
um, so that I don't damage it, but we'll, we'll see. And then I had that galvanized pail um, bucket thing and I threw a couple of yellow daisies in there. Um, and then these pots mimic the ones um, to the left. And so that's the front. Um, and then I have, I have this catnip that I um, overwintered in the pot last year. This is for my kitties inside. Um, it seems to have reseeded itself pretty well inside the container. So we'll see how that fills out. Um, <clears throat> going up the stairs, um, last year I had done some pots with zinnias in it. I always like to have zinnias somewhere um, to cut. Um, last year I did the state fairs, the big ones, uh, and they got really top heavy and uh, they just didn't really do that well. So this year I did the Dreamland mix, which is supposed to be a shorter variety, um, but with the same size flower head on it. So I'm excited about that. Um, they usually take a while. Um, I did something different. I experimented with these and I'm not loving how they're looking, but I'm gonna give it some time. Um, so last year I had noticed that um, as my zinnias matured, their stems are furry. If you can see the fur on the stem, uh, very much like a tomato. And with tomatoes, you plant them deep. Um, those furry uh, things, for lack of a better term, <laughs> um, on the stem will become roots and makes a, a tomato stronger when you plant them deep. So I planted these zinnias super deep. Like they were probably, I don't know, some of them were maybe eight inches tall and I jammed them all the way in. So some of the smaller ones didn't respond as well, but some of the, the more mature ones um, they, I don't know, they, they're doing okay. So we'll see. Um, but anyway, so I did four pots here and that always brightens up the, um, the steps. And then I am going to go up and show you, uh, my houseplant rack, um, which I just, I think it came out really, really good. Um, I love all my clay pots with their patinas on them. Um, everybody seems to be doing fairly well out here. Um, I'm going to have to rotate, uh, some of them cause they are, leaning towards um, the light. Uh, but this is my wraparound. And all the way at that end, I did a um, Black Eyed Susan vine on an obelisk um, and my American flag hanging off the corner. That was a Mother's Day present last year, I think, was to have my husband put that up for me, um, which I love. But anyway, um, I'm hoping that that Black Eyed Susan vine will go up and then also uh, trail down over the corner. That's one of the tallest ends of the wraparound. Um, so anyway, that's that, but I just, I, I adore how this came out. I really, really, really like how that came out. Um, that fiddle leaf ficus was in my daughter's room. Um, it was struggling. She doesn't get a whole lot of light on that side of the house. So we popped it out here and it had some fungus gnats in the soil, which freaked her out. Um, so I'm going to come back down. I popped that pot there. Um, I don't know what I'm going to put in it. Something. But I had that extra pot and I had some uh, open bags of soil, so I kind of threw that in. Um, and then my other coleus pot, um, which is the one that covers the well cover. All right. And we come down. And I found those little guys in my compost um, from my gourds from last year. So I'm going to find a spot to put those. Uh, that fluffy arborvitae that I had, um, I had a couple of them that I had overwintered in pots on either side of the door uh, and on the corner of the garage. The one on the corner of the garage did not, didn't make it. It really didn't bounce back. But the two that were tucked in in those barrels um, did great. So uh, one is going here. Um, that is my, there's Fred. Um, that is my phantom hydrangea, my regular bush form. I absolutely love this hydrangea. The flower heads get anywhere from like 12 to 18 inches long. They are enormous. Um, I love phantom and it gets big, so it'll fill this space pretty good. Um, and I think that the arborvitae will be a nice little, um, you know, texture behind it. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's that. I haven't planted anything going down here. The soil is terrible. This is the old soil. Um, and it's really dry and, uh, the dogs like to run around. So it's all compact. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to plant. I haven't decided what to do there. So, um, if you look up, that's where my black eyed Susan vine is. And so, like I said, I'm hoping it'll go up and then kind of creep down through the, um, the rungs of the railing. I think that'll be pretty. Um, so this bed, uh, is a unique bed. 
um, this big giant hay rake um, was given to me by my father-in-law. Um, he had it in his front yard and um, it came to live here. And this is where I decided to put it, although it's kind of a unique spot, but I have a huge piece of ledge <laughs> underneath that thing and it would stick up through the grass and then the grass would all die around it and it made me crazy. So it became a bed. Um, I didn't want to plant in it, obviously, because of the ledge underneath it. So I opted for containers. Um, this is the next bed to be mulched. Um, I normally do um, in those pots Black Eyed Susan Vine. Um, this year I decided to mix it up a little bit. Um, I did leave some of the, if you can see blowing there, some of the dried vines from last year. Um, the birds fly over here, they pick at it, and they fly away with it. So uh, they really like those dry vines for building their nests, I assume. Um, but anyway, in these pots this year, I am doing um, a climbing nasturtium, um, again with the nasturtiums. Um, oh, I forgot to show you the poppy pot. Um, I'll have to go back over. Um, so anyway, so these are going to climb up and, and cover the wheel, hopefully. I don't know. I've never done them before. Um, we'll see. I've only done the regular nasturtiums. Um, so I have a couple coming up in that pot there that'll come up and then down and cover the tines. Um, this side seems to be doing really well. Um, so I'm excited to see how this turns out. Um, I don't know. I just, there's something about nasturtiums. I, I love them. Um, I planted this maple a couple years ago. This one is called peaches and cream. And you get a rainbow of colors with this particular variety. Um, but I think it might be getting too much sun. And um, two winters ago, it got beat pretty hard um, with some snow and some breakage. Um, but this year, it seems to be rebounding um, pretty well. But I just, I love the leaves. Look at how pretty that is. Isn't that beautiful? I really, really like it a lot. So I'm hoping that I'll get some good growth on it this year and, and she can stay because I really like her a lot. Um, anyway, um, so down here is where I decided to do my uh, makeshift vegetable garden. Um, I had to find a spot that was in full sun all day, and uh, this spot pretty much gets it. Um, but I do my vegetables in containers, um, obviously because my ground is not fantastic. Um, so I normally do one tomato plant every year. Uh, just one, that's all we need. Um, and this year, um, a friend and I are both growing them and we're going to share. Um, so I started with three. Um, I am doing a black crim, uh, which is an heirloom. I'm doing a yellow pear, uh, which is that one there. And then sun bliss, which is a um, yellow cherry uh, tomato. And then my brother got in some of the sun gold. So I had to put in the sun gold because those are the little orange ones that literally are like candy. Um, and then I'm not a huge pepper fan, but um, the poblanos I really, really like. Um, so I have a couple in that pot there. Um, and then in the smaller pots in the front, I have, um, we do at the store, a, a cucumber in a hanging pot. Um, it's called Fresh Pickles is the variety and it's really good. It's, they're really, really good. Um, I have quite a few already going on there. So my little pickles there a whole bunch of little ones under there too um so i popped it out of the hanging basket um and stuck it in this um pot that i drilled some holes in that my daughter had in her room and wasn't using anymore um i am doing romaine lettuce in a clay pot um first off it's beautiful <laughs> i don't know can you call lettuce beautiful i just oh god it's so pretty um so anyway i had five in there um one in the middle and that one i did cut out last night um, to give the others some room, but they're heading up. You can see, I'm starting to get my head. Um, I could cut some of them at this stage and use them and then they'll regrow. Um, I just haven't done that yet. Um, and then I did a huge pot of carrots. Um, these are the, uh, what are they called? Rainbow mix, I think. Um, so it's all different colored carrots. I've never grown carrots before. Had an extra pot, threw them in there. Um, and then this one is um, radishes which I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> I don't know why I'm growing them. Um, I know my dad likes them. Um, and um, I don't know. So I watched a video or something. I don't know, something. And I was like, huh, they grow fast from seed. Um, I'm going to try them. So 
I have my first crop. I only had two seeds that made it. So there's that one, which is starting to get kind of pink, which is nice. And then this one is the other one. And that wasn't enough for this pot. So I threw some more seeds in there. Um, I did some of the watermelon ones and the, uh, I forget what the other one is, French breakfast, I think. There's my strawberry pot that you guys watched me pot up. Um, they are doing fantastic. And I think somebody got to this one, which is okay because it was cat-faced anyway. Um, but I have a lot of pink going on. This one right here is mine for later. Um, but a lot of berries on there. Um, oh, there's another one over here. They're beautiful. They really do well in a container. Um, so I think these babies that are sprouting off, I'm going to uh, put some pots around this pot, some smaller pots, and um, try to get them to, oh, look at that one's rooting. That one, I just kind of tucked it in the side and look how quick, I mean, I literally tucked it in there not even a week ago and it's already got some roots. So I'm gonna tuck you back in. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna put some pots around this pot, I think, and, and root them out. Obviously it doesn't take very long. And um, I don't know, I don't know what to do. Maybe another container, we'll see. Um, here are my sweet peas, which are doing fantastic. Um, a couple of the branches are a little limp because we had to move this from the front of the house uh, down here once I finished this um, vegetable garden area. Um, but I have a lot of peas hanging off of it. And um, I've eaten a few right off of it as I walk by. Um, and then I did some carrots on the bottom. I don't know why, just because. Um, so we'll see how those do. Um, that Virginia creeper, it's all growing back there. You can see it. This is a huge patch. It's kind of covering the stone wall. That's kind of what it likes to do. It just kind of rambles along. Um, sometimes if it hits a tree, it'll shoot up the tree. I have a tree on the other side of the driveway. Um, that has it growing up and it's, oh my God, it's spectacular in the fall. Back there I had all the, those are wild blackberries, I think. Um, I just went down there this morning and cut all that stuff back. There's some bittersweet in there too, just to try to contain it so it doesn't jump over to my strawberry tomato cages. Um, stand up peppers. All right, so that's that. Um, that's my makeshift vegetable garden. All right, so coming up on this side, um, last year, I planted this orange dream maple. And it gets about 8 to 10 feet uh, tall. I think 6 feet wide. I forget. I'd have to look at the tag. Um, look at that. Oh my gosh. I've never really been a huge fan of maples. Um, but this one, the fall color is fantastic. It really is. It's like a beautiful orange. Um, and I think it'll fill this corner nicely uh, once it gets mature. It's gonna take a little while. So this is what I've been working on, um, planting around the uh, deck and the um, back side of the house where the garage is. So I'm not gonna go through plant by plant, but I have everything pretty much set out. I know I'm gonna tweak it. I'll move stuff around. Um, but anyway, a couple of hostas back there, I think the blue, accents the yellow uh really nice so and that one's gonna get huge um <clears throat> and i'm gonna pop a um, annabelle hydrangea right there which gets about five feet wide um and then these are um bush honeysuckles that i planted last year these are kodiak orange i think let's see yeah kodiak orange um they have beautiful fall foliage um, and their flowers are loved, loved by hummingbirds. Um, so I think those three, I need a little pruning on that one, but I think those three are gonna fill in this area nice. Um, they survived the winter pretty well. Um, and then I'm gonna do three more uh, Annabelle hydrangeas along the front here, um, which I think will be really pretty uh, when they fill in and start blooming. Um, this right here is my tricolor bird beach tri-color beach. Um, I'll try to get close on one of the... Look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. My brother got one of these in at the store and I fell in love with it. And I have a birthday coming up. And 
I kind of twisted my husband's arm to buy it for me. Uh, and so it's gonna go back here where we can see it from the deck when it gets bigger. Um, and it's gonna fill that space eventually. Um, but oh my God, it's so pretty. I am in love with that train. All right, so keep moving, keep moving. So um, I always say that um, my gardens are like the uh, Island of Misfit Toys. Um, I take home all the plants that either are returned um, or are growing weird or whatever. Um, and usually they respond pretty well. Um, this is a sensation um, honeysuckle. And we had, we had it returned um, by a customer because she said it wasn't scented. And um, I brought it home and it surely was scented. Um, but it is what it is and uh, it's I have two of them now and they are growing nicely uh, up my trellises although I don't think they're gonna get enough Sun um, to really um, produce well but I have flower buds so that's a good sign um, I'm hoping they'll go all the way up to the top uh, and my hummingbirds will love that okay next is a hydrangea um, it is not doing well I have to give it some uh, iron tone I think um, this hydrangea, um, I've had for, I don't know, maybe five years and where I had it, it had big, beautiful leaves, but never any flowers, which is typical with a macrophylla. Um, I forget what variety this one is. Um, I don't know. I had special ordered them through the store and, um, if it doesn't respond well, it's going and I hate to do that. I hate to throw away plants, but if it's not doing what you want it to do, then it's time to swap it out with something else. Um, on either side of my steps, um, I planted, um, hookerellas. Uh, these are the catching fire variety. Um, I don't know. I just liked them. I like the, the veining on, um, the leaf. I like the flower. Um, and then I planted these containers to kind of match. So I did a hookera, um, in the back. Um, I popped in some, um, bedding and patience in a bright pink just to kind of brighten it up a little bit but I'm not sure that they're gonna the other pot's doing better um I don't know if they're gonna thrive in there or not they're kind of getting covered already and then I did some of the trailing um coleus which is pretty and then the um sweet potato vine which again I'll have to prune up um this one seems to be doing a little better I don't know why um but flower stalks coming up those are pretty too anyway uh, in the black plastic urns so those flank either side um here's the second uh, hydrangea that's on its last chance um although this one i do have a flower bud so this one might stay but it does it needs to be treated with the iron tone too um i don't know what's going on i moved them late august and uh, i don't know if they didn't like that or what um it's a mess back here leaves and I haven't I didn't get rid of any of the grass um, that's where the other fluffy arborvitae is going to go I think it'll fill that space nicely hopefully it gets enough sun um, some of the sweet woodruffs um, now this is all just I don't know I don't know what I'm doing over here um, we hadn't planted behind the house I hadn't decided what I wanted to do and this year I said I'm doing it and it's a huge huge project um, but I'll tackle it slowly um, and I'll move things around until I'm happy. Um, but I have a lot of work ahead of me. Um, this is a tough stuff hydrangea. This is one of the um, mountain hydrangeas, I think. Um, there's a lot of buds on this. Um, I brought this plant home three, three years ago, I think. Um, and I never got it in the ground in the fall. And it ended up in the barn. I totally forgot about it. And in the spring, I went out there to go grab something, and uh, there she was, uh, butted up and a little yellow. And I pulled it out and went, hmm, all right, well, you deserve to find a really good spot in the yard. So I left it in its can, uh, put it on the side of the house. I watered it religiously and never found a spot to put it. And so it spent another winter above the ground in its container uh, last year, um, as well as a couple um, Invincible uh, hydrangeas um, and they all survived <laughs> so I had to get it in the ground one of the early uh, warm days we had I popped her in and um, 
that's where she's going to live. So anyway, uh, lots of hostas back here. This is kind of a shady spot. Um, the Tiarellas, that cutting edge, I really like that. Um, this is my lilac. This is a white lilac, angel wings, wing, uh, wing, angel wings, I think it's called. Um, and I planted it last, late last summer, I think. Um, I treated it real heavy with lime um, because they do not like an acidic soil, and I know our soil is acidic. Um, I also threw a whole bunch of triple phosphate on it. Um, and remember how I said that triple phosphate can make things like melt? That's what happened. They totally did that. So I'm going to prune these up. They're almost done flowering. Um, and I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it alone <laughs> because it's, it's had enough trauma. Um, but I have some decent new growth going on. So I, I, it's going to recover. It'll be fine. It's just this year was kind of a loss, which is too bad. Um, so coming along this side, um, there's my wee hosta. I love that one. That one's really cool. I love the high thread. Um, I love the way it's wavy. And as it grows, oh, you can't really see on this one because it's too mature. But um, as they come up, they're really like wrinkled on the bottom. It's cool. Uh, there's my invincible um, hydrangea. Lots and lots of buds on that. Um, I have a sad little white bleeding heart that I dug up from a friend's yard and it's not happy. So I think I'm going to cut it and just water the heck out of it and hope that it comes back. Uh, Brunaria or Brunera, however you want to pronounce it. Um, there's another one of the Invincibles. Um, I think the Invincible Spirit, which is, that's the pink one. I don't know. Um, this is one of those odd plants that I came home with. Um, this is, which one is this one? Ooh la la. Yeah, Chatelain Ooh la la. Um, it, I don't know what it was doing. It grew this funky, like, flower stalk, pulled the leaves up with it. It was weird. It is starting to get some new growth on the bottom and, um, I guess go back to what its normal plant shape is. I don't know. It was weird. So I took it and that's where it's going to live for right now. And some woodland flocks that I got early. Um, and pop those in. They're not doing great. My husband went a little crazy with the weed whacker on that one, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm gonna have to cut them down anyway. Um, this hosta I got from my dad. Um, he collects hostas. He's got, I don't know how many, tons and tons. Um, that's another one. Those two small ones are lemon and lime, I think they're called. Uh, another woodland phlox. Uh, a couple more hostas in the back that I have to plant. That enormous one and that enormous one um, I dug from a friend's house um, and I whacked it pretty hard and it, they were really, really, really mature and, and they're really good. And uh, I am very, very happy that they are, um, they seem like they're doing pretty well. Um, it was a couple weeks ago, but they're really sturdy, which is a good sign. Um, so I'm hoping they'll take over that area because they were just, they're massive and they're beautiful if you have the space, but he didn't have the space for it. So, um, and then I have a couple more hostas to put in here, a nice big blue one in the back. Um, and then some other colors, there's Menarda. I haven't decided on that yet. Um, and then this is one of the reasons why I have a hard time planting back here because we have, um, the generator, which is a huge eyesore and the air conditioners which is another huge eyesore. And uh, so I decided I'm gonna go with it. And in front of the generator, because it's a light color, I am planting a red twig dogwood. So in the wintertime, it's gonna be beautiful. Not that we come back here that often in the winter, but it'll be really pretty. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. And a couple of uh, hookahs, which are somewhat evergreen. So I'll still have a little bit more of that red color in the winter. This corner gets um, some sun. I don't know if it's enough sun for a rose, but I fell in love with this rose. It's a David Austin. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. Um, so I'm not a huge rose fan, but I'm gonna try it and maybe this one will change my mind. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but it's loaded with buds. I mean, it's just, there are so many flower buds on there. It's ridiculous. Um, and then I have a nine bark in the back, which I think honestly is underused. It is definitely an underused plant. Um, this one's going to get about five feet tall, five feet wide. Look at the color of that foliage. The new foliage that comes out, it is just, it's the most unique, beautiful, 
color. I don't know. They're pretty. Um, and then a couple of uh, hookahs in the front. Um, obviously not placed. That one's not planted. I had that in a planter all winter. And I think I'm going to mix it in uh, here. And then I'm going to try a uh, clematis um, on this corner of the house. And we'll see if it gets enough sun. Um, but anyway, so this is what I've been working on. Um, you guys have heard me talk about my nemesis hill. That is my nemesis hill. This hill will be the death of me. Um, it's pretty from a distance right now uh, with all my oxide daisies and uh, this yellow, I don't even know what this yellow weed thing is, but it's pretty, so it stays. Um, but there's little trees that grow up through it. Um, that is a constant battle. Um, I have some clover growing in there, which I leave because the bees, you know, you gotta watch out for the bees and it blooms early. So um, the bees really like it. And then I have an enormous lupin in the back, um, which is, this year was fantastic. It's doing really, really good. Um, and the daisies are so pretty right now, unless you look close and you realize how many weeds are in there. And it makes my OCD go a little nuts. And so the story behind this hill is um, when we rebuilt the house, um, I thought that I wanted a wildflower uh, garden back here. And so I had um, one of my best friends who's a landscaper come and um, spray this whole hill with wildflower seeds and uh, mixed with grass as a carrier. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, it took a couple years uh, for the daisies to come up and kind of do their thing. And I'm like, wow, that's beautiful and out of control and not kept. And um, they really only grow on this side. <laughs> so the rest of the hill was a little weird. Um, I had put in some of these um, cedars. There's two of them. Um, they're doing okay. Um, I have some spirea. Uh, they're doing okay. Um, a little bit of sweet william there which I leave because it's pretty and it smells good and it's good in an arrangement. Um, this soil sucks. I'm going to flat out say it. It sucks. Um, so I have a really hard time growing anything without really amending it um, immensely. And uh, it's hard to dig up here. Lots of rock, lots of ledge, and um, a lot of work. And so this back hill, my nemesis hill, uh, is always the last that I work on. Um, my peony's blooming. I transplanted him early, so he's got some burn on him, but it's pretty. Coral, coral something, that one's called. Um, so anyway, um, this hill is a lot of work, and um, I slowly work on it, and then I stop because I get frustrated. As you can see over here, um, I got frustrated. <laughs> I was trying to do a walkway around it last year, and... Um, I ran out of stones and then I kind of gave up. Um, so I do have some irises blooming over there with, um, there's some agapodium at the base, which is pretty, it's a nice mix. Uh, behind it is an oak leaf hydrangea, um, and then, um, one of the oxide daisies and there's some stupid tree, sassafras, I think, growing in, in between over there. Um, this is mountain mint. Uh, I have two patches of this. Um, it is fantastic for the pollinators. It's not beautiful. Um, it spreads like mint and it smells like mint. Um, but when it's in full bloom, I'll take a video, uh, later this summer and you will see how many pollinators are on it. Cause it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. So mountain mint, uh, it's a native and, um, but it spreads, you gotta have room for it to move. All right. So I'm making my way up to my honeysuckle, uh, in front of it. I have the um, Tidal Wave Speedwell, which I, I really like the color of that against the honeysuckle. It looks really pretty. Um, I put these in last year and uh, they're so pretty. It's like a blue, I don't know, ground cover, like a creeping flax, just different. All right, so here is my honeysuckle and I wanted to give you an update on my aphids. Um, it looks as though the neem oil worked. Um, I do have to come in here and prune up those uh, damaged areas. Um, let me see if I can find one that... Ooh, there's still some moving on this one. All right, I'm going to have to hit it one more time. Um, but in general, they're dead. But some of them, 
I might not have gotten because they were closed. But there's nobody moving in that one. So the neem oil works if you can coat the whole thing. Um, so anyway, ooh, butterfly just flew by. Oh, it's a black swallowtail. Yay, go over my parsley. Um, anyway, so that is my honeysuckle and um, it's, it's kind of the queen of this hill because it does really well. Um, so that's why I wanted to treat it with the neem oil and get rid of those aphids because they're jerks. Um, and so just kind of pan this way. That's my other um, mountain of mountain mint. Uh, it really is going crazy. Um, so that's my nemesis hill. Um, I'm trying, see, I'm, I am trying to reclaim some of it. I don't know. It's, I get frustrated working up here. Um, but I do want to show you my butterfly garden. Um, this all kind of came together um, last year. Um, I had these raised beds. Uh, I got the corners uh, and the center pieces from um, Gardener Supply, I think. And you just slide the wood in and um, there you have it. So <clears throat> I tried to put a lot of um, butterfly weed and milkweed in here for my butterflies. Um, it all started with your regular milkweed um, that Jeanette, one of our employees, had given me some um, little teeny tiny plants and I popped them in here because I had no other place to put them and uh, I knew I could dig and that they would do okay. And they have spread. It's taken a couple years, um, but I have a, a nice row of them now and they are popping up elsewhere. So there's one, there's one, and then there's one over there. Um, in the back, I have the swamp milkweed. Um, towards the front, I have your regular uh, tuberosa um, butterfly weed. Um, I have garden rue, which is that, it's actually a pretty plant. It's got like, I don't know, fern-like kind of foliage um, and it blooms yellow and the swallowtails love that as well. Um, I have a little piece of my, <laughs> my uh, peony. The root must have gotten left behind. That's where that peony was originally. Um, so I'm gonna leave it. Anyway, um, I also threw in some of my um, uh, oriental lilies. God, I couldn't spit that out. Um, there's quite a few different varieties in here, uh, but I think everybody will like them. Um, you know, bright color, um, and then the other stuff will be blooming when they're passing, so I think it'll be all right. Um, the new plants I put in this year were the um, gay butterflies, milk uh, butterfly weed. Um, that one is like an orange and yellow, um, so I think it'll be pretty. I threw in some of the serendipity um, alliums. Um, there's a trio of them. Uh, that one in the front is going to bloom first, I think. Uh, in the back, I have a pugster um, butterfly bush, which is coming back nicely. Um, you never know with butterfly bushes, but that one, that one's making it. Um, I do have some echinaceas in here, too. Um, this one's called um, Marcella's Rainbow, I think. Um, and then there's the coral craze. Um, and then in the front is some speedwell, um, spike speedwell that I had up on the Nemesis Hill that wasn't doing well. And I popped a couple of them down here. Um, there's more of my lilies, swamp milkweed in the back, which is actually, this end must get more sun, uh, through the day because my garden row is a lot bigger on this corner and my swamp milkweed is already budding up which is fantastic. Um, so anyway, so that's my butterfly pollinator um, garden and I love it. I gotta get in there. I have some bulbs um, left over from Easter a couple years ago. I just tucked in that I have to cut the foliage back. Um, but that's that. And um, so thank you for taking the tour with me. Um, I have a lot of work ahead of me. Um, Fred's not helping at all uh, other than following me around getting in my face when I get down on my hands and knees. But um, I hope to give you guys an update once I get everything planted, which God only knows when that's going to be. Um, but I'm going to start hammering away at it because um, nobody else is going to do it but me. So I got to do it. Um, and I'll give you guys some pictures once I uh, decide on where everything's going to go, especially uh, in that area. I'm so indecisive with planting permanent stuff. Um, but I just have to bite the bullet and do it. So one last look at the Nemesis Hill. Uh, I love those daisies though. <laughs> I don't know. 
such a mess. Anyway, thanks for taking this journey with me, you guys. And um, I've missed doing my videos. So hopefully I can uh, get back to doing a weekly one. Uh, it certainly won't be as long as this one. This is really, really long. So I'm catching up, making up for lost time, I guess. Um, I hope everybody's well. And um, we hope to see you soon. And thanks for watching.